What's up, everyone? How you doing? Welcome to another Fuse AMA session. AMA stands for Ask Me Anything, in case you didn't know. But it's not asking me anything. We're going to be asking Will everything. So uh, hold tight. Oh, yeah. <laughs> thanks for joining us today. Please don't forget to like, share, subscribe, all those normal things. Smash all the buttons. We really appreciate that. This week, as I said, we've got the co-founder of Mantra here with us, Will Corkin. And we're going to get into the idea. We're going to talk about development for Mantra. We're going to talk about future goals for this company. And we're just going to kind of get the broad idea of what these guys do and then leave it open to you guys to jump in and find out more. So how are you doing today, Will? You good? Doing all right. Hanging in there. Um, <laughs> you know, just uh, just got back to, to Hong Kong uh, a couple of days ago from about two months of travel Whoa. in uh, in the U.S. and Singapore for, I think, three conferences. So, uh, and, you know, countless meetings. Uh, so ha happy to be home now. The life. And, uh, you know, kind of settling in, getting back into a routine. Nice, nice. The life of a crypto entrepreneur. It's uh, so, ta you know, when people, you know, when you say, <laughs> oh, I've been traveling, I've been doing this, people, people sometimes are like, oh, wow, I'm so jealous. But it's not that cool, right? Traveling around on your own all the time, kind of hustling about. You can get a little bit, um, you get homesick, right? <laughs> well, the thing is with these conferences too, and like, it, it's great to see that like the, you know, conferences are back in full swing around the world and, you know, the industry is really coming together and it's nice to have kind of, you know, IRL in real life yeah. events and meetings, but like, I mean, they're, they're so tiring because like, you know, so like last week was token 2049 in Singapore and they probably had 7,000 people. Um, so we had, you know, a couple booths there, I was speaking there. And it's just like, you know, it's, it's nonstop having these conversations with, with everyone, um, which is great because there's, you know, so much interest in a lot of, you know, company developing meetings, but uh, it's a bit draining after a couple of days. And you're, and you're kind of repeating as well, aren't you? Because you're talking to new people. So you're just kind of like this robot who's like spieling it out. <laughs> I get it, man. So it's good exactly. to see that you're back at home and you're settled. So thanks for joining us today, man. I really appreciate that. So we're here to thanks talk about me. And everything that's been happening for you guys. And I've seen that you've had a really serious rebrand over the last couple of, uh, well, I, I just saw it recently. So you can tell us more about this. But um, first of all, like the relationship with Fuse and Mantra, it runs quite deep. Um, mm -hmm. You guys help secure the Fuse network as a validator uh, and a partner, right? I mean, what does that mean for people that are wondering if maybe there's some perks that they can tap into with this deal? Mm -hmm. What does it mean that what I've just said? Tell us. Yeah, absolutely. So... I mean, we're definitely, you know, kind of OG partners with hmm. uh, with each other as, you know, I think we, we both kind of launched somewhat, you know, around the same time, I think, you know, back in 2020. Um, and, you know, it's really, it's, it's always amazing to see kind of the development, uh, you know, over the, I mean, I would say years, but even just months within crypto that, that, yeah. part, that you know, happen. Um, but yeah, as you said, so, you know, we were Genesis validators for, for Fuse and the Fuse network. So, you know, kind of what that means, you know, for proof of stake validators, you know, different from, or just proof of stake blockchains, um, different consensus algorithm than proof of work, which, you know, people know from Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. um, but that's from, you know, pretty much running infrastructure for these different chains um, that help to validate the network. So, you know, significantly uh, more energy efficient. So, you know, that's kind of the big one of the big moves with Ethereum moving over now to ETH 2.0, which is as a POS uh, chain. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so, you know, and then there's kind of a number of other, you know, ways that it helps to kind of secure and, and uh, decentralize the networks um, by being able to kind of verify all the transactions and, you know, store kind of all the data. Um, so that's kind of, you know, one of the big things that validators bring to these ecosystems, you know, like Fuse is, uh, is one, you know, de further decentralizing the network by, you know, having all these different validators that come together and, and support. Uh, but then also, you know, being able to support and help with um, with any of the builders on the chain by yeah. them being able to access, you know, APIs through the Mantra, you know, Fuse node um, and being able to kind of query information from, um, from the network that they need. Uh, and there definitely are, so like there's, you know, big incentives for that for, you know, both retail and, you know, and companies um that you know it's a, a lot easier than running a, a bitcoin uh yeah. rig yeah. so being able to to stake and delegate your uh you know your fuse assets to the mantra dao um fuse node you're actually i think the apy right now is around you know 13 or 14 percent 
nearly 14 um, so 13.9 yeah, or something like that yeah near, yeah it's right right around 14 um and we have you know we make sure that we have you know nearly 100% um you know upkeep of the network as well as you know one of the lowest commissions uh pretty much across the board so you know definitely ways to don't just sit on your you know your fuse or don't just sit on your assets exactly. you know have them work have them grow um it's you know it's much easier and it's uh it's just kind of the smart thing to do not financial advice but <laughs> <laughs> no of course i mean i was going to add to it and be like it is a smart thing to do. this is not financial mm -hmm. advice it's that if you've got assets sitting there there are ways to accumulate further assets on top and it's mm -hmm. very little work involved. So uh, yeah, yeah, go and check that stuff out on your own, like I said at the beginning. So uh, people are free to go and look into that as well. So, mm -hmm. all right, well, let's let's kind of dive in, man, because um, I've been in this space a while. So I've seen that Mantra has been around for a while, right? So mm -hmm. when Ma Mantra first started out, it was Mantra DAO and yep. initially was really focused on becoming a DAO in the Polkadot mm -hmm. ecosystem. and. Mm -hmm since then kind of morphed along and given that when you launched it does make a lot of sense that summer of DeFi hit us and it, it does make a lot of sense morphed into a kind of multi-chain DeFi ecosystem and um mm -hmm. and this has kind of led to this rebrand right so tell us about the new yeah. style the new vibes it's more than just colors and pictures right it's it's more than that right well uh big, big time i mean while while we do like the colors and pictures um there's kind of a lot more that yeah. That is, uh, you know, the building blocks of what went into and kind of where we landed with, um, you know, Mantra as kind of the group umbrella company. Yeah. Uh, you know, you're, you're right when we, so when we launched in August of 2020, um, you know, super bullish on the, the Polkadot ecosystem, you know, that had been being built by Gavin Woods, one of the co-founders um, for Ethereum yeah. for the last, you know, couple of years. So it's finally, you know, coming to fruition. Um, and we were, you know, pretty pro on, on, being, you know, first mover within that space, focusing on staking and then, you know, eventually moving into other DeFi products as those kind of emerged over the last two years. Um, and we actually, when our token went live, August 18th, 2020 was the same day that the, the DOT token um, started uh, trading. Okay. Uh, so that was, you know, kind of a nice, a nice tie in. Uh, but obviously, so with, you know, kind of the Polkadot network, it needed to, we needed a bit more time for it to actually be built on, you know, the, the parachain still took a bit longer to um to actually you know come about so we kind of looked and you know wanted to be able to deliver other products uh, and that's when you know we started building on you know other chains um still bullish on on the polka ecosystem um but you know we also bullish and you know see that there's a lot of community and a lot of potential kind of across the board and that's kind of how we started building a lot of the different products on you know uh, multi-chain so you know the the mantra platform uh historically has been on, you know, on Ethereum, BSC and Polygon. Mm -hmm. um, and I've, you know, kind of tested out on a bunch of other networks. Uh, but, you know, as you said, started as Mantra DAO, you know, we, we've always been kind of community focused, uh, you know, having been in the space since, uh, you know, 2016, 2017, you know, have always known that communities are what make or break yeah. different blockchain companies. Yeah. Um, you know, it's like having a, a public company from day one that's, you know, actually private because you're selling tokens. But, you know, you yeah. need to be fully transparent. You know, they're the ones that, you know, are, are, are keeping everyone kind of, uh, you know, to their roadmaps, making yeah. sure that they actually deliver. Um, and so we've always known that, you know, community is the biggest part. You know, we build things for our community. It's not we do use it, but ultimately it's the users and you know the community that ends up being the users. Okay. Um, so that's kind of, you know, we saw the kind of DAOs as a structure coming about. And we thought that was absolutely perfect for kind of the ecosystem that we were building. Uh, but, you know, one of the big reasons that we actually, you know, rebranded and it's not like we completely got rid of the DAO. Um, we just, you know, what we've been building over the last two years was kind of a, a lot more. Sorry. Have... <laughs> I'm going a bit crazy in the background. <laughs> that didn't startle. Um, was, uh, you know, besides just kind of the, the DAO is we worked on, you know, a number of different pieces uh, kind of in the background um, that included, uh, oh, hold on, give me one sec. Yeah, cool. There we go. Um, that, you know, were, were kind of encompassed a bigger ecosystem that we were looking at. Um, so, you know, while we do, while we do still have the DAO that focuses on you know, the community, the governance, uh, the grants program, which we recently launched, um, we, we've also been working on kind of, you know, three other main pillars, 
So, you know, mantra nodes has always been, you know, one from day one, we've been super bullish and pro proof of stake blockchains. Um, so, you know, running different validator nodes for different chains. Um, at the height of it, we had, you know, about 30 plus different POS chains um, going. Uh, and that we're, you know, kind of continuing to build, uh, as well as starting to actually move that to a bit more institutional. So, you know, like we were saying with, you know, kind of earning passive income through through staking to nodes like, you know, yeah. to Fuse, um, you know, for, for different people, whether you're, you know, a bank, a, a hedge fund, a family office, um, even just, you know, a high net worth individual uh, that has, you know, a bunch of crypto actually putting that to use. So because we have the infrastructure, being able to, you know, spin up other validator nodes for people or companies, um, and then us, you know, kind of manage and deal with the upkeep and all of that. So that's kind of, you know, that's been growing and, you know, we'll continue to support, you know, as many proof of stake blockchains um, that come about pretty much. Okay. Uh, and then, you know, second to that, we're also building our own chain. So we're building Mantra Chain, yeah. which will be a Cosmos uh, Tendermint uh, EVM compatible chain. Oh, nice. Um, like, which, you know, yeah. we, we, we know that, you know, a priority and kind of majority of, of people on in DeFi, you know, still do use Ethereum. So, you know, having those kind of connectabilities uh, with EBM, you know, similar to kind of Fuse being a, uh, an EBM chain as well, um, is pretty crucial. Uh, but then we also, you know, just we're, we've seen a lot of really good development within the Cosmos ecosystem um, and really like the way that, you know, they've, they've structured their chain and kind of the modules with how you build it. So we're also building a, a chain. Um, and then kind of thirdly, we're also uh, developing a kind of a licensed um, aspect inside to these through Mantra Finance. Um, so Mantra Finance is going for, you know, we've always been pro-regulation. Um, you know, over the last couple of years, we've seen that eventually the space would move into something a bit more regulated. But, you know, ultimately it took, it takes time for that stuff to actually be, you yeah. know, kind of fleshed out and for regulators to come about and just for clear guidelines and, and roadmaps to be put in place for how these things work. Um, and so we've actually been, you know, working with a number of regulators around the world to be a, you know, kind of compliant and licensed DeFi platform. Um, so currently working with, uh, with like Vara and Dubai, um, hopefully to be one of the first, if not these first uh, regulated DeFi platform there. Um, on Soma Finance side, which I'll you know, talk about a little bit later, which is kind of a sister company of ours, we actually developed a license with the SEC and FINRA over a two and a half year process um, back in 2017 to 2019 to be able to, to operate, you know, do token, you know, private placements and token sales to U.S. retail, international retail, accredited institutionals um, compliantly in the U.S., which has never really been done before. Um, so really starting to, to tie in so that you know, as the, as you know, a lot of this does move towards, you know, regulated compliant ecosystems, you know, we're at the forefront and able to, you know, operate uh, within multiple jurisdictions. So that was kind of the, you know, one of the big reasonings for, yeah. for going through the rebrand was really just showing people that, you know, we're not just the DAO, which was a lot of people knew us for, or even we're not just, you know, the validator nodes business. We're not just, you know, the staking, um, the launch pad, which we ran for, you know, a lot of last year. Um, it, you know, ultimately entailed this much larger ecosystem that kind of all flows into each other. Nice. So there's a bigger picture here. I've just noticed, sorry, Will, that my video is lagging, but I think my voice is all right. I think we're okay on yep. the voice, right? Yeah, I thought so. So for everyone who can see my face, I'm moving behind my voice. That's kind of cool. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So, um, all right, cool, man. Thank you for that. Like it's, um, the rebrand is obviously a big thing that we're going to talk about today, but it makes a lot of sense what you're saying, trying to bring different components under one roof. And uh, a lot of, like I knew you as Mantra Dow. So yeah, I think it's quite important to get that message out there, right? That it's a change. So let's talk yeah. about the chain a little bit, man. Like I think, so you're launching a new a new uh, network and it's going to be mm -hmm. on the Cosmos SDK. So am I right in thinking that a new token will come along with this uh, blockchain? Yep, that's exactly right. So we'll introduce a, a chain token um, that will be called kind of the other spelling of Ohm. So the hmm. governance token that we have for Mantra is OM. Uh, and then the other spelling of OM is AUM. Uh, uh, also means assets under management, but you know, we like focusing on the, the OM side. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but that'll pretty, you know, pretty much be like a ETH to Ethereum. Um, okay. So you know, used, used for gas and this kind of stuff. 
All right, cool. So so you'll have OM token and you'll have ORM mm. token, as it were. So these yep. two will stick concurrently, right? So will the release of the new token, you know, how will these two tokens live side by side? What what mm -hmm. roles will they play? Will the release of a new token, I mean, I'm being a bit of a degen here. I'm asking, is it going <laughs> to hurt the other token, Will? Like, mm -hmm. tell us about that a little bit. Yeah, no, I mean, it's it's a great question. Um, you know, we, we kind of see them both playing their roles um, you know, quite separately and, and not being too much, you know, cannibalistic overlap mm -hmm. um, with, you know, own being the governance token, um, you know, the token for, for staking and, you know, accessing a lot of kind of the DeFi products um, and then kind of AUM being the, the native chain token. Um, so what we'll do is, you know, we will be airdropping the AUM token to all of the own holders. Um, so, you know, we'll start to kind of do a lot of different incentives for, Ohm holders, Ohm stakers, Ohm suppliers, uh, meaning OM, uh, over the next coming months, you know, really starting um, with the AUM token from the chain. Uh, we also have, you know, projects like HeliSwap right here, which is a, uh, the first DAO and DEX for uh, HTS, which is Hedera, and ERC20 tokens that's actually launching today, oh, uh, nice. probably within the next <laughs> hour or so, but <laughs> we'll have it to like, you know, OM, OM, hold, OM holders, you know, we'll get airdrop tele tokens, uh, nice. SOMA tokens, you know, a portion of SOMA tokens that are being issued in the next two months. Um, those will be, you know, given and, um, you know, kind of delegated for OM holders. So, you know, really bringing a lot of use case to hold the governance token. Nice. Nice. And also just, yeah, for the token holders of OM is the reason I was asking the question, I guess, is for those guys to rest assured that there's processes in place and that things are happening for those guys so yeah ex exactly it's not like we're going to launch the new token and like to yeah. totally forget about about the old one um <laughs> you know there's definitely you know we're, we've just uh, way of right. one. this is crypto yeah. it, 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 it was going to be an unfor unforgotten child <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's um, what i wanted to ask as well because it's a question yeah. that people i'm sure would want to know so uh let's get it absolutely out be let's yep. be transparent as well and it appears my face has caught up with my voice again so that's yep, fine there we go <laughs> caught up with yourself caught up with myself uh, <laughs> i never thought that would happen to be honest um <laughs> so um i mean a question i, I want to ask and it's a bit of a maybe a little bit of a, a prickly one i want to check out there but mm -hmm. i think right now I've, I've heard some noise on twitter a lot of people are saying that we need fewer blockchains and more killer dApps mm -hmm. and i'm kind of I'm kind of feeling that, like, because, yep. yeah, I think that, like, with the mobile phone era and, you know, basically iPhones were useless until apps came along, right? There was nothing mm -hmm. really to do there. Take a picture of yourself. Great. Um, <laughs> so I'm kind of like, yeah, what do you think? So I've put it out there. What do you think? Less blockchains, more dApps. What do you think? It's a, I mean, it, it's a great point. Um, and I think there's, you know, potentially something to be said with with layer zeros. Yeah. Um, that, you know, more of those <laughs> is, is potentially, you know, uh, overkill. Yeah. Um, but we are, so like, you know, I think a couple of years ago, absolutely. I would have agreed with that. Okay. Um, but where, you know, the, the ecosystem and kind of the world we live in now with so much kind of inner blockchain communications and cross chain abilities, it's now making it that it's not like each chain is living within its silo. You know, it's no longer yeah. like if you want to be on the Ethereum ecosystem, then you're only there. If you want to be on, uh, you know, Hedera or you want to be on, um, you know, any of these other ones that yeah. you're, you're siloed to being there. Um, it's, you know, become a lot more kind of interactive. And I think, you know, something with, you know, Cosmos specifically is the way that they've developed their SDKs is, you know, it is very builder friendly. Yeah. Um, and you do have a lot of dApps and a lot of, you know, kind of chains on top of there that have been building that are, you know, kind of similar to having, you know, focused dApps yeah. um, that they are pretty specific to like, you know, they're conquering. We're going to be the, you know, the NFT marketplace, the NFT creator. We're going to be the, the DEX and AMM, um, you know, we'll be the kind of peer to peer lending and borrowing money market. Yeah. Um, so really kind of focusing down and, and nailing you know, what they're either, what they're targeting. So I think that's something that, you know, we'll definitely do um, as well. You know, we saw that there were kind of a few points where that haven't really been addressed within the Cosmos ecosystem, which were kind of around the, the compliance and regulated assets. 
Mm. Um, so because we're actually, you know, getting, you know, either have these licenses in the U S through SOMA or getting these licenses internationally through Montreal finance, um, we'll be able to, you know, bring things like, you know, KYC, AML, decentralized identification, um, on chain to be able to, you know, passport through, uh, once you've kind of gone through KYC to be able to access, you know, different platforms, um, you know, fiat, you know, on off. Uh, so bringing, you know, kind of real world currencies on chain and off chain um, and even things like, you know, public equities and traditional securities, you know, bringing them on chain to be able to be traded, uh, you know, in things like a, a DEX or AMM style yeah. um, where they're also, you know, kind of mapped to the kind of one to one backed, you know, the paper share that's you know sitting in a custodial broker dealer, um, you know, in the U.S., let's say. So I think, you know, bringing some of these things that we're really going to be kind of the first to focus on these and bring them to the ecosystem. So it's, well, I think, you know, yes, probably not enough as much need for maybe potentially other L zeros. Um, you know, I yeah. think as, as long as, you know, you're building it and being able to kind of connect with the ecosystem um, and, you know, Cosmos has the, the inner blockchain um, connection, the IBC, which, it, you know, it, it makes it super easy to be able to kind of export and transport um, different assets and different tokens, you know, within these different, um, you know, L2s kind of across there. It's a really good point, actually, that you've, you've convinced me a little bit. Will. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. Um, my, my job here is done. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. End the stream. Yeah, I think yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. a strong point that you make though. And it's not that I didn't, I wasn't thinking about it, but it is a strong point. And I think there's space for, and it's not a question that needs a definitive answer, really. It's it's an open it's an open thing, right? And I think each person has their own opinions, but I think we have space yeah. for everything. And as you said, networks need to build out the appropriate ecosystems of DApps that they require. So they all need a DEX, they need an NFT yeah. marketplace. So, yeah, interesting. So you did a good and, job. And like the, I mean, the interesting part is, you know, when we launched, we kind of took the reverse chain approach, whereas you know most blockchains launch and they launch and then like. Step one is we got to go find dApps to build on us and yeah. like prove our, you know, proof of concept. Yeah. We launched and we built a bunch of dApps on, you know, ETH and BSC and Polygon without our own chain. So now it's like, okay, we built all these different you know, smart contracts and, and products. Why don't we just, you know, bring them all in house, you know, have our own chain that we'll mm -hmm. be able to kind of underpin all of them um, and then kind of go from there. So it's a bit of the reverse approach. Um, not sure too many others have, have really done that. So we'll definitely yeah, be a uh, bit of a test case for it, but we think it's a, a pretty strong, um, you know, at least on, on the dev and building side, uh, you know, kind of a strong approach for it because, you know, we've already kind of tested out what works and what doesn't work exactly. on a, a lot of these other chains. And it's competitive out there, right? So I mean, oh, yeah. that's important to have case studies. I think even though it's a kind of retrofit, well, it does make, again, it makes sense. Like it shouldn't, hamper you can't see it being a negative really right mm. it's, um so building on mantra so like i said there's a lot of competition out there right now every blockchain mm. is trying to attract developers everybody's trying to get everybody into their ecosystem right so in terms of mantra what kind of dApps are you guys looking at like do you have specific categories that you're interested in or are you just like come launch do your thing or do you have a yes vertical i mean i think it, it'll be a bit open i mean i think the you know, going for regulated products um, and regulated kind of DeFi will be a, a big focus. Okay. Uh, we will be building, you know, a number of modules kind of based around gaming and NFTs as well, um, as we definitely saw, you know, kind of a bit of a gap um, there also. And yeah. and we have, uh, you know, some investors on the, the Soma Finance side that are kind of big gaming companies uh, like, you know, Animoca Brands and, and Griffin Gaming Partners that, um, you know, we think that, we can build a you know pretty strong reason to to come and build over there, yeah. um, so you know I think that'll be kind of the initial focus. But okay. you know again as we you know as we kind of progress and and continue yeah. to build, you know where that is in six months or a year's time yeah. could be totally different. Well, um, things change so fast, don't they? Like we saw exactly. That I mean, if you're in the space, you see the changes coming from a, from a distance, mm -hmm. I think. Like we saw NFTs coming from, yeah, it, it's not that. But for the outsiders, it must be quite ridiculous. They're just seeing this evolution of the space. <laughs> like, every six months, we've got a new invention. Like it's crazy. But Exactly. I suppose one thing, and it, it leads me into this question around gaming, and, and you mentioned it there with Animoca mm -hmm. and, and, the, and, the and the sort of connection there as well. But 
gaming has become a big thing over the last year, right? And we're seeing mm. a lot of attention being grabbed by blockchain games. Now, I want to be clear. I use the word games. I'm using it loosely in some sense, and I'm using it less loosely in others. There are different categories of blockchain games. We've got GameFi. Mm. You press some buttons, you grind it out, you get some rewards. Cool. Some people like that. But there are real games emerging, and there seems to be a real thirst for it as well. And what do you think about games on the blockchain world? Like, do you think they have a future? Do you think this is something gamers will embrace? Are you a gamer? Like, do you do you have an opinion on it from that perspective? Yeah, I think you know, I I'm I, I wish I had more time to game as I as I <laughs> used to. Um, you know, I'm kind of a like a, a Call of Duty um, guy myself. Yeah. Um, no but time. I think I mean, there's definitely a huge a huge place for for you know blockchain based games, and I think that's you know, really proven evident over just kind of the sheer number of, of yeah. people that have game, come over, you know, traditional game developers, players um, that have made kind of the jump over and are really focusing on building and kind of growing the space on chain. Mm. Um, you know, having said that, it, it's it's definitely still, you know, significantly behind yeah. um, the traditional side. But of course, the traditional side oh. of gaming has been around for decades, so. Yeah. You know, it's, it's not like that's really expected to be overtaken <laughs> anytime soon. Um, no, no. But, but I think, I mean, the, like the play to earn stuff has been super interesting. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't think some of the companies have necessarily, you know, I think that the tokenomics are a bit off just with oh. having, um, you know, kind of artificial, um, artificial tokenomics that, you know, kind of help to increase, you know, people coming on that don't really support and they're not sustainable. Well, there's, no um, that's reason, really, you know, there's no reason to hang around there is there it really is set up to to pump it and dump it like if you, it, it, it exactly be, right like it's set up so that a bunch of people come in some people will win a lot of people mm -hmm. will lose but ultimately there's no sustainability around it it was it was never designed that way really was it? you can't just exactly smoking's basically well it's not you know there's only so much money you can throw off the roof right <laughs> exactly and that's and that's kind of one of the you know we've actually been working on you know something that we're kind of calling a game by yield engine mm -hmm. um and being able to kind of utilize different sustainable yield sources you know let's say like through a, a mantra nodes um system with you know kind of all the the validated the pos nodes that are generating yields having those be able to kind of come into games and provide yield so it's not just exactly the token artificially you know, pumping up by new money coming in and then just being dumped by the people that have been around. Um, so we do, I mean, we, there's, there's a huge market there. It just hasn't really yet been, been figured out perfectly in terms of, of how to get the kind of tokenomics and just like the in-game um, economies that work and kind of pr promote and prop themselves up yeah. um, sustainably. Yeah, it's a long, we've got some way to go there. I think, um, yeah, an interesting last sort of 18 months that I saw in gaming. Obviously, gaming's a bit, games on the blockchain have been around for years, but it just didn't really catch anybody's attention until recently. But uh, I think the one thing that's cool about it is it's bringing record numbers of people into the blockchain and it's bringing people Absolutely. applications, right? And they have to sign transactions. They have to start wallets in most cases. So it's teaching people through gaming, which I think is, is very cool. Exactly. I mean, I, I think, you know, the last two years have, we've seen so many more people um, across the board come into the space. Yeah. And that's really been, been caused by, you know, a lot of these different angles that have been opening it up to different communities. So, you know, NFTs that open it up to, you know, people that were into kind of collectibles and art yeah. and, you know, just an easier way for people to kind of understand what, yeah. you know, an, an on-chain asset was, or, you know, what a, a you know, maybe a non-fungible token that leads into it, either a fungible token. Mm -hmm. um, so that was, you know, that saw a lot of people coming into the space and now gaming, you know, saw a lot of people that were already pretty hardcore, you know, computer yeah. um, gamers or just gaming people in general that, you know, tried a couple of the kind of on-chain games and them entering that side. So it's been, you know, I think as we, as we have more use cases, mm -hmm. that will cause people that, you know, are passionate on the off-chain side to actually come on-chain and, you know, that's kind of the, uh, you know, the, the rabbit hole or at least the kind of the first taste that gets them yeah. to, you know, start kind of diving a little bit deeper and and Absolutely. learning more and more. That's what I'm seeing. And I'm seeing it as a really strong positive where we're, we're 
pushing people towards the edge of the rabbit hole with fun and visuals, which I think was what was, I think that's a big part of the NFT hype is that mm -hmm. you visualize something, people can understand it. You put a tangible value, yep. however obscene it might seem sometimes, it's still a tangible thing that you're adding value to. It's not a speculative one. <laughs> it is a speculative. Exactly. Those visual, <laughs> visual aspects of it, I think really helps people to kind of just be like, oh, cool, I can own this. Like. It's, it's very interesting watching at the moment the kind of mm -hmm. evolution of thought processes and and how people are working at the moment and um and yeah so in terms of that and in terms of launching dApps on on mantra and like trying to mm -hmm. expand that ecosystem like what is and it's competitive as we said you know so what's the what are you guys doing to like get people on board what are you are you incentivizing people how are you kind of reaching out to developers and and, and getting in getting involved with these guys mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think I mean on the chain side, we're we're still in testnet right now. Yeah. Um, you know, we'll look to to have that go to mainnet probably Q one of next year. Okay. Cool. Um so so still a, a bit of time off. You know, having said that, we we have had, you know, inquiries coming in on people wanting to learn more about, you know, developing on the chain and and you know, wanting to kind of see how to participate. Um so on that side, you know, you know, we'll prop that up with, you know, things like grants programs. Um, nice. and, you know, community incentives for be able to, you know, kind of bring in more products, more projects, uh, and more builders kind of into the ecosystem, uh, on the node side, you know, it's, it's really just kind of working with and, and continuing to talk to, uh, more and more POS chains. Yeah. Um, you know, that's, that's something that, you know, as POS chains kind of come about, um, we're pretty passionate to, to be somewhat, you know, chain agnostic. Yeah. and work with as, as many as possible that, you know, of course, go through and pass, you know, due diligence process that they're, you know, legit and they're building something that, you know, they're making sustainable. Um, nice. And then on the, I mean, on the finance side, you know, both on, you know, Mantra Finance as well as, you know, Soma Finance, I think some of the big USPs will be able to be able to interact with, you know, different securities like public equities um, actually on chain. So, you know, using a DEX or AMM style and being able to trade your, you know, your Ethereum against uh, Tesla um, or your, you know, Apple against Google. Uh, and we're talking kind of the, like wrapped assets here, Will, right? So yeah, so, so wrapped assets, but still one-to-one -one backed. One so you one. still get proxy voting rights, you still get dividends. You know, it's not like synthetics or, or mirror protocol. Mm -hmm. um, you actually have that, that paper share, account. you know, in an account. So if yeah. you really wanted to, you know, you could, you know, you could switch it over, you could take it, you could take it from like your e-trader and active brokers and put it onto, you know, like Soma Finance. But if you really wanted to, you could then take it off and put it back into the traditional system. Yeah, nice. Um, so being able to, you know, leverage the, uh, the benefits of having on-chain, you know, kind of instant settlements, yeah. um, you know, things like DEXs and AMMs uh, take away all kind of the previous uh, BS that's really happened with centralized exchanges. You know, there's no front running, there's no order book manipulation. Um, you know, you, you're not trading against, uh, you know, some of the best traders in the world, or you're not getting the order book sold to, you know, big institutions that are, you know, kind of going to take advantage of that. So really having a level playing field um, and being able to, you know, offer that to people around the world, um, and especially on the like U.S. public equities, you know, people in you know, the yeah. Philippines or Indonesia or, or, you know, Latin America or Africa, you know, they've never really been able to access, you know, things like Tesla or Google. Um, or, you know, different U.S. public equities, um, you know, one, because of just being able to access a, a platform that has them. And yeah. then two, you know, if a share is $300, that's a pretty big barrier to enter. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you're able to buy, you know, $10 worth of a share now, because you can do with fractionalization. Ah, um, okay. So there'll also, be a fractionalization uh, aspect to it as well. That's even better. Yeah. Right? That's amazing. Yeah, exactly. The, and then even back to the, you know, validator node stuff with, you know, you might as well delegate and stake your assets to earn kind of, you know, passive yield. You know, same thing, being able to either, you know, lend out and earn yield, being able to be a liquidity provider in a DEX or AMM um, and earn on the trading fees. Um, yeah, you know, all of these things are, you know, reasons to, you know, not just hold, you know, don't just have it sitting in an account, you know, actually have it working and be able to grow, you know, kind of as you sit there. I think that's, 
that's a big thing that needs to be kind of educated out there over the next couple of years. Mm. I, think, I think there's a lot of confusion. And I think it's to do with language, really, to be quite honest mm. with you. We understand each other perfectly, right? But <laughs> to some people, we're speaking <laughs> Spanish right now. So, oh, exactly. They'd, they'd probably catch like 15% maybe of what we're saying. And that's, again, I guess it's kind of our fault, but it isn't. You know, we have to use the words appropriate mm. to the industry, but we also have a job to do in explaining what we do. And I see that on your YouTube, you're very active in terms of kind of mm. education and giving out information is really important and i think um we've all got a bit of a job to do that's what we're doing here right now as well i guess so yeah yeah um, exactly we spoke about soma quite a lot and i, I just want to dive yeah. into that a little bit so it's like i mean we just went over it really deeply but what's the relationship <laughs> with soma finance because i see you guys mentioned together a little bit and you said earlier sort of a sister company so what's yeah. the how does that work what's the what's the deal yeah so so soma it's it's actually a a, a joint venture between Mantra and a U.S. licensed broker dealer called Tritorian Capital, um, that I've actually been working with for you know the last uh, six or seven years, uh-huh. um, and that was one that you know so so what Soma is is it's kind of the first regulated and licensed DeFi platform in the U.S. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I met the guys running the broker dealer Tritorian, you know, back in 2016, 2017, as we were launching a centralized crypto exchange. Um, and that was always, you know, we we're planning to have it be a, you know, fully licensed multi-asset exchange, leveraging, you know, starting with crypto and then, you know, moving to public equities, nice. you know, ETFs, commodities, you know, so on and so forth. And, you know, while that actually didn't end up panning out, what it, uh, what it did end up doing kind of the silver lining was it started a conversation with the SEC and FINRA back in 2017 on going, you know, we have this traditional broker deal license that can work with securities. Can we work with? um you know securities on the blockchain yeah and they were like you know absolutely not totally different <laughs> don't you dare do that um and that pretty much started like the two and a half year saga back and forth that ended in 2019 with us actually receiving an additional uh business line on top of our broker dealer to nice. be able to work with uh blockchain based securities which in the u.s anything you know all the crypto assets are pretty much securities yeah um you know nfts in-game assets tradables you know, those will pretty much all be securities. Um, so being able to, you know, compliantly issue those to U.S. retail, um, as well as, you know, trade it in kind of this uh, this peer-to-peer automated market maker style. Nice. Um, so that's actually, you know, we're, we're launching that within the next two months. Okay. Um, you know, starting with the the Soma token sale. So mm-hmm. we have its own, its own token called Soma. Um, that'll, you know, kind of be a exchange token, but also... You know, because it is a registered security in the U.S., um, it'll also give out dividends. So we're actually shooting for, you know, around 25% of the platform profit to go back to the Soma token holders, um, which, you know, companies in the past have wanted to do, but they can't because the minute you do that, it's a security. Yeah. Uh, but we can actually, you know, call a spade a spade and issue this as a security. Um, so towards the end of the year, we'll actually be doing a, a Reg CF, which is the U.S. crowdfunding um, exemption. And we'll be doing kind of the first retail token, initial token sale ever to U.S. retail. Wow. Um, any project in the past has always had to avoid the U.S. because they didn't want to have, you know, the SEC kind of coming down on them and either fining them, putting them in jail or, you know, something like this. Okay. Um, so we'll actually be launching that. And then shortly after we'll launch the DEX, which will have both, you know, crypto assets as well as, you know, public equities. Uh, so, you know, think, uh, you know, Google, Tesla, Apple. Um, but all in this kind of AMM style. Uh, and then we'll have, you know, an earn and yield type product. Uh, so similar to kind of what, you know, Celsius or BlockFi were doing, but, you know, actually licensed and legal and compliant to do such. Yeah. Um, and actually using sustainable yield sources and not kind of artificially, um, you know, creating those yields from... From wheat. <laughs> from, okay. Yeah, exactly. STE. Um, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And, and, you know, having all of this be non-custodial. So like okay. that's really kind of where the a lot of the the importance comes in that people have you know hopefully learned over the last couple months of you know again seeing you know people or companies like Celsius go under you know they were pretty big touters of you know don't put your money in banks because you can't control it and then they end up saying you know if you're depositing in the platform it's actually ours so you know actually having true non-custodial uh, smart contracts and, and yeah. offerings. So that, you know, if you do want to take it out of, you know, uh, the, the, the decks or you do want to take it out of a, an earn or yield product, you it's can do cool. such at any time. 
you know, it's, it's completely yours to, um, to do and, and transact with. That has to be, that has to be the way forward, Will, right? That has to be the way. Otherwise, we are going against everything we tried to do all these years, right? And, and it leads me into the next question, because I know that you guys are KYC compliant, right? Mm-hmm. So and we're going to get a load of DeFi maximalists being like, no, I don't want to give up details. I don't want to do <laughs> Yep. Me, I mean, there's a lot of noise around this topic right now, and I'd mm-hmm. like to, it would be a miss not to ask and talk about it. So for me, I thought it's inevitable. And the way that you're talking also sounds mm-hmm. like you've always thought like this, and that to give the best products and services and be adopted mainstream, this is the only way. And do you, do you agree yeah. with that? Like, that, is that a- your vibe? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, that's the, you know, if you want to get really the lion's share of people, you know, people that have been, you know, having some public equities or yeah. people kind of in the traditional world coming over, you know, you need some sort of, you know, compliance and, and risk factors that come in so yeah. that, you know, just like, you know, working with a, a bank or an institution, you know, they're backed by a federal government that helps to protect them. You know, they're making sure that there aren't bad actors that can, you know, do rug pulls or scams. Um, so, you know, while a lot of people do push back on, you know, things like KYC AML at the end of the day, it's, you know, one, it's secure. So it's not like you have to worry about, you know, a lot of the stuff being leaked, um, because, you know, there, there are, especially a lot of this stuff is, is off chain and is, is crept, you know, incredibly secure. Um, but it also, you know, keeps and weeds out bad actors, you know, illicit people, um, terrorists, you know, things like this, that, you know, you really don't want to be working with or trading with um and even for you know if you're an institution you know institutions or banks or you know any of these bigger players they've never really been able to access any of these DeFi products because there's so much counterparty risk um, that they have no idea who they're you know kind of trading against yeah so actually being able to say that you know okay you know you can have and being able to access all these different you know DeFi ingenuities yeah. Um, but now, you know, anyone that you're interacting with, at least, you know, that they've passed, you know, some level of KYC AML. Um, and so that's, you know, a big thing if we want to get, you know, traditional people to start, you know, dipping their toes into crypto or even crypto people to start dipping their toes and expanding their portfolio into, you know, traditional securities and public equities. Um, this is that's just cool. kind of a crucial step. And I'm not saying that it'll completely envelop, you know, proper decentralized finance. Mm-hmm. Um, there's always going to be, you know, a market, um, yeah. and a place for, you know, kind of, uh, you know, non licensed yeah. activities. Um, but we've, you know, we, we think that they, they'll, they'll play hand in hand and there's kind of space for both, uh, okay. depending on kind of what you're trying to access. Interesting. Interesting. So you see a sort of, yeah, this, I also see that kind of black market, we could call it, I guess mm-hmm. this kind of activity is not going to go away. People are going to want to do that, but yeah, I, I absolutely agree with you. And I think there's a big, uh, a lot of confusion around anonymity and kind of privacy. Privacy is mm-hmm. one, anonymity is another, right? Like it's not, yeah, I think there's a lot of confusion around these things. But like I said at the beginning, I think it was inevitable. And uh, yeah, I just wanted to get your take on that because obviously with the plans that you've got and what you want to offer, there is no other way to go about business, right? It's got to be this yeah. way. And um, yeah, I guess we'll see how it plays out. But I would th- say that the minority of people are the ones who are probably the, the maximalists against all of this, mm-hmm. right? I think so. Yeah. I mean, rewind five years, I might have been saying something slightly different, but <laughs> you've got sure. to be, re- be realistic, right? It's, uh, yeah. it, 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 you're going to live in a fantasy land, so yeah. Um, okay, so we're getting towards the end of the session, and, and one of the things mm-hmm. that I wanted to sort of touch on as well, it's a bit of a, a wide question, let's call mm-hmm. it that. So I'm starting to see like a bit of a narrative in in DeFi right now around DeFi 2.0, as I'm going to kind of call it, or other people are calling Mm -hmm. it. DeFi 1.0 for me was like great fun, amazing evolution, rug pulls, exploits, beta launches, people getting involved in things they didn't truly understand. Lots of money, lots of evolution. Most importantly, the tech. We improved Mm -hmm. it a lot through that stage, right? But now it feels like security user friendliness, these are the things that people care about. How easily can I trade crypto in your mobile device, for example? Like, Mm -hmm. let's, so what do you think, Will, is the kind of future for DeFi in the short term now and moving forward, let's say five years, like not in a hippie way, like let's be real. (laughs) Do you think that in the next five years, we'll be able to pay with Fuse dollars for drinks in a bar? 
Yeah. So, I mean, I'll, I'll take a, a, that a, a bit of stride. Yeah. Um, you know, I think a lot of DeFi, you know, will be kind of working towards permission DeFi. Okay. Um, so similar to kind of the KYC ABL, you know, having it where, you know, some of these pools, they do need to be confirmed and approved before adding in. Because again, that, you know, I remember back, you know, over the last two years, you mm-hmm. know, kind of at the really onset of Uniswap, you know, being worried about launching, you know, announcing when you're going to launch like your, your, your Uniswap pool, because someone might come in and make a fake pool and, and, you know, put the link and that's going to happen. And like, that's a, you know, it was a huge, you know, part of kind of the, the launch strategy yeah. was, you know, when do you set up the pool and when do you announce the, the links and all of this? Um, so, you know, how actually moving to something like a, you know, permission DeFi, which, you know, it still is, you know, decentralized, but, you know, you, you do have some sort of checks to, yeah. to actually get, get started. Um, be nice. You know, I think, you know, five years is such a hard thing to, to fathom. Um, you know, look at, you know, DeFi has really only been around for, you know, a little over two years now. And, you know, within the last two years, it's brought about so much. I mean, you know, DeFi, you know, peer-to-peer lending and borrowing, DEXs and AMMs, you know, they really did revolutionize the traditional market, you know, how people trade, how people lend, how people borrow um, in such a, you know, much easier peer-to-peer manner. Uh, you know, there's still a lot of hurdles in terms of the UI UX um, and user friendliness and usability. You know, I think that that is the biggest thing that it's the responsibility of the, the you know, the builders, the, the, the project owners within the space is to, you know, build products that would be able to onboard non-crypto people or, you know, very, very uh, recent adopters to crypto and being able to kind of build and, and make a, you know, a, a comfortable environment where they feel like they're, a, you know, they're not going to lose their money by clicking the wrong button. Yeah. Um, you know, it's definitely an approach that, that we've always taken, you know, having customer service to be able to respond to people, you know, having things like tool tips, um, yeah. you know, step-by-step guides, tutorials, you know, is going to be a, a major part because, you know, I was talking with someone the other day and, you know, while we think setting up a MetaMask is incredibly easy, you know, one of the guys, um, it was actually, it was at a panel on Token 2049, who's mm-hmm. one of the founders for like one inch. He was like, I remember when I opened up a MetaMask, like the first time was like completely user unfriendly. And like, it was actually a bit daunting. And so like it, it you know, you kind of forget that as we've, you know, we're kind of, yeah. you know, head first into the, yeah. the ecosystem. But like even things like this, you know, while it does seem somewhat straightforward, you know, you really do need, you know, this is how it works. You know, don't worry about this, you know make sure you write this on a piece of paper, make sure you don't lose exactly. it. Um, exactly. People so fear think, what you don't understand, right? They you, mm-hmm. Generally, human beings fear what they don't understand. So that safety yeah. aspect, that like, just what is this? What does it do? Why does it look so scary to me? I've never seen it before. Right. It's, it's very simple stuff that we need to overcome, right? But yeah, exactly. Good point. Yeah, so and I think, I mean, like, there are solutions coming off, you know, social logins for wallets, that I think will really help, you know, being able to create a wallet based off your Google account or your, you know, yeah. Facebook. Um, I think that'll, you know, that'll help the space, you know, pretty immensely just because again, it takes away, you know, a little bit of the, the onboarding hurdle. Um, but, you know, that's always, you know, from day one, it's always been education and building things that people can understand and making sure you have all the necessary information kind of right there for people to make educated decisions and feel comfortable with interacting with the platform or product. That's it, right? You've got to feel comfortable, comfortable and safe and kind of, and intuitive as well. I find with a lot of blockchain stuff, it is like counterintuitive. I mean, for us, as we said, yeah, it makes a lot of sense, but imagine that, I mean, the other thing that occurs to me, Will, is that if we just take, let's take the global population, right? How many people in the global population are interested in investing their money in stocks and shares and making in finance, let's say, mm-hmm. genetically? It's not everybody, is it? And it's not everybody who uses their money in a wise way. Some people just live mm-hmm. health. Like there's, there's an, a strong argument to say that you can't achieve mass adoption of DeFi in terms of how we think of it traditionally. I wouldn't, is it making sense what I'm saying? It's like there's not that. Yep billions of people who are sitting at home right now thinking how can i take control of my financial independence mm-hmm. and yes we can educate them and tell them that they can but perhaps they're just not interested so it's like yeah. 
picking and choosing about where your markets are and and which battles you fight, I guess, as well, are going to be quite important for us moving forward. Do you think? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I, I totally agree. Um, you know, I think a lot of these platforms have done a good job in terms of getting people to really start looking, especially younger generations, you know, yeah. millennials, to start looking at kind of their financial future yeah. and not just be living, you know, paycheck to paycheck, which, you know, don't get me wrong, I've, I've done in the past. Me too. Um, but I've, you know, done a good job of, you know, you, you should start looking at this stuff and, you know, it doesn't have to be, you know, you investing a hundred thousand dollars, you know, yeah. you putting in a hundred bucks a month exactly. and, you know, buying a stock or buying a crypto. And then kind of the next phase of that now is, you know, for kind of us on the DeFi side saying, you know, now that you've been kind of building a portfolio of these different stocks, yeah. you know, actually have it work, you know, make sure that you're earning interest on those, um, you know, kind of as they're sitting there. That's a super strong point as well. Like the next, like thinking of it in stages as well, Will, and like how you get people in and then evolve them as they go along and, and they find things that they're interested in or they or they jump out, right? That's how it goes mm -hmm. generally. But yeah, yeah, interesting, interesting. All right, cool, man. We've got to kind of roll this up because we're. I feel like we could just keep chatting all day, to be honest. <laughs> um, but we can't do that. We have to We have to get back to business. Um, we all have much work to do, of course, and, uh, and other things. But, uh, well, is there anything else you want to get out there? Obviously, you've got the chain launch. That's coming Q1, you said, or mm -hmm. tentatively. Anything else that people should be aware of, checking out? And then once they uh, know what they mm -hmm. should be checking out, where can people check this out? Where's best for you? Twitter, Discord, LinkedIn, Facebook? Where you are. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm always available. Um, my, my Twitter handle is, is kind of below in my name. Yeah, there it um, is. That's also my, my telegram handle, um, my LinkedIn, you know, kind of all of this. Um, and so I would say, you know, you know, join the kind of the discord or the telegrams for, you know, our different communities. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're doing a lot on the mantra side. So, you know, if you're a builder, um, if you're, you know, an investor, if you're a trader, you know, come and check us out and kind of see, you know, we're, we're doing a lot across the mantra finance, the Dow nodes and chain. Um, so, you know, I'm sure there's something that, you know, we can kind of build together or, you know, kind of help to, to grow with you. Um, and then on the other side, so, you know, so finance is launching within the next two months, yep. um, that, you know, we're super excited about that's been kind of a long time coming. Um, and that, you know, we have a, a wait list of about 600,000 people right now. Um, so, you know, really excited to actually start to be able to roll out some of these, these regulated, um, DeFi products and, you know, things like us public equities, uh, to people. Uh, and then, you know, HeliSwap is launching. I mean, it could have for, for all I know launched while we've been on this, uh, this <laughs> podcast. So, you know, if you guys are, might are be, users, yeah, we're not sure. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it could be. <laughs> Um, if you guys are users of, uh, you know, the Hedera ecosystem, there's been a lot of movement recently within, uh, within Hedera with a lot of people building and kind of bringing DeFi over to the Hedera ecosystem. Um, so we, you know, we received a couple million dollar grant from the, the Hedera foundation, uh, and H bar for, you know, different liquidity incentives for people. So, nice. you know, if, if you're someone that has you know, looked at Hedera or has used it, um, I would go check it out. I mean, we pretty we have some pretty badass rewards um, going on a monthly basis. I mean, I think there's like 10 million H bar rewards going out kind of the first month across our different yield farming products, which is you know a bit over half a million dollars. Yeah. Um, so you know, go check that out. You know, follow us on Twitter. Um, you know, join our Telegram and uh, and learn more. I mean, we have you know pretty great community across Mantra. You know, Soma and HeliSwap. Um, so, you know, people, if not myself, will always be there to kind of answer questions. Um, so, you know, come and join the community and, you know, kind of look forward to hopefully welcoming uh, everyone there. Nice. All right, man. Thank you very much, Will. Thanks for joining me today on the show. It's been very cool to, to chat with you. Yeah, again. that was awesome. Kind of jump inside your head a little bit and see what's going on there for Mantra as well. So, yeah, exciting stuff coming up, like I can see. And Mantra Finance will be launching on Ethereum, Binance, Polygon. Is that right? Uh, so most most likely it'll probably, uh, yeah, you know, launch on Ethereum uh, potentially yeah. with, you know, Polygon BSC uh, and then, you know, the chain once we once we launch that. Um, but there's, you know, a lot of movement there. So, you yeah. know, reach out and, uh, you know, also if you guys have ideas and kind of directions that you guys think would be interesting, um, you know, happy to kind of work with anyone and and see what makes fit. 
and uh, make sense for, you know, kind of communities across the board. Nice, man. All right, cool. So people can reach out, Discord, Twitter, get in touch. You can get in touch with Will directly there. His Twitter handle is in his name. Um, all the links for everything else will be in the description uh, after the live video is finished. And yeah, we'll put all that stuff there for you. So for everybody watching, thank you very much. I hope you learned something today about Mantra. I hope that you're more interested and educated about it and you can go and check it out. Go and check out Fuse Network as well. All the links will be there as well for you guys. So you can check that out. We've got some, it's crazy at Fuse right now. So we'll have our community call in a couple of weeks and I'll definitely ask you to come and join that one because it's too much to talk about in an hour, basically. <laughs> craziness, craziness. Yeah. But again, thank you everybody for joining us. Thank you, Will. Thank you for answering all my... Yeah, thanks uh, so much for having me. All good, man. All good. I'm sure we'll meet again. Let's get your launch done. Let's see where you are next year, perhaps, because I think this could be... Exactly. We can do a, uh, a round two sometime next year and we'll catch up, kind of right? see, okay. see where the space is then and, uh, and what we've built on both sides. See if our predictions come true, right? And see if... <laughs> exactly. Comes like that. All right. Cool, man. Thank you so much for your time, Will. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Take care. We'll see you all soon. And uh, yeah, have a good day. Thanks, everyone.